coach whenever you're ready if you want to preview this upcoming week and then we'll open it up to questions. Mm -hmm. All right, last game of the four-game pod and our second pod. Uh, so for us, we want to uh, close this out with a two-and-two two situation um, after losing, uh, dropping the ball on, on the last two. So, you know, the focus has been, I think, uh, one of the issues we've had lately is just our foul trouble and not being able to utilize our depth in the way that we want. And... Um, you know, that has been a focus for us, getting back to who we are defensively. You know, you score 76 points for us. That's a lot. We thought that that would be enough to win, and, and we didn't. So uh, uh, if I'm going to try to close out a pod, it it would want to be a situation like this, I guess, if you worrying about, like, if your team's going to be ready to go. Um, they don't need a lot of encouragement getting ready to play for Mississippi State. Um, who's in our other? Yeah, who's the next game? Oh, am I talking about that today too? Okay. Um, I don't want to talk about that because I'm focused just on Mississippi State. And the last game was electric, and I'm hoping this one um, has the same type of atmosphere that it did when we went to Starkville. Uh, letting kind of pulling the curtain back and yeah. letting the girls in on the numbers and the mm -hmm. pod. You think that's helped maybe keep them kind of calm in, in this past week? Yeah, um, it's it's been interesting because I, I, they they explained to me that they wanted to go eight and zero, but they live in like this fairy tale land. Like I could have told them that wasn't going to happen. I think I even tweeted about it just because I understand that the basketball the season's long and it has ebbs and flows and. When we went into Auburn, I felt real good about the game, and look how we started. I felt good about every game on the, in the start, but things have been happening that are uh, uncharacteristic, but has been our Achilles heel the last two games that we can't really control. Um, you know, Slim going down, um, and then um, some foul, early foul trouble has really affected us. Um, and not because of anything the team is doing. It's just our, our focus and our mental. So they wanted to go 8-0, um, and they they see that we're 5-2. and two. And so I just told them, like, for me, my human emotion wants me to say, I wish we didn't win five in a row because now it looks like the sky is falling when actually <laughs> we're still 5-2. and two. Um, but if you look at it in the other perspective, like I know that every team that doesn't have five wins in the SEC right now would love to be have five wins, no matter what. So we've done the work early to put us in a situation where we don't need to panic. Um, our goal is NCAA tournament. So we we I think we got to just continue to take things one game at a time. Um, you know, I don't think we'll finish this the rest of this whole nine games undefeated. That's not that's not what that we don't have to do that to get into the tournament. You know, we have to. There are uh, there is a number that is in our head and that we want to go after, and if we can get to it, um, then I can sleep at night before selection Monday. <laughs> Every game's different, every mm -hmm. situation, every game's different. But uh, obviously, the foul trouble. How is, is that fixable, or is it? Yeah. Just, I mean, uh, Oh, it's fixable. Like, you know, you go back and you look at the fouls and you're like, why are we doing them? And it's it's things that we just don't have to do. A swipe, you know, uh, uh, riding someone 96 feet away from the basket, you know, like not even 94, 96. Like I was intentional about saying 96. Uh, you know, Maya getting that foul in the Bama game, like the girl was out of bounds. So it's like, focus stuff, discipline stuff that we need to do. It's not um, because we're playing driving teams, like they drive. It's It's been us not being in position, us not being effectively on the wall, us not dictating and saying, this is what uh, we want you to do offensively. And I felt like we've gotten away from dictating um, it like we needed to. And so that's something that we're focused, we've been focused on. I know you're not super big picture, especially mm -hmm. deep in the season. Yeah. But 
help the obviously the win tomorrow get you kind of back in the win column field goal, but mm -hmm. also would secure the first season sweep in, in a long time. I know this is an important rivalry. Mm -hmm. What would it kind of mean to you? Well, it would mean one more victory to our, towards our goal. You know, one more win that we can put in the win column. One more W that can probably uh, allow us to create some separation um, because there are a lot of teams that are like right behind us that, that are probably rooting against us. Whereas for us now, we have to root for Auburn. We have to root for Alabama uh, to beat those teams to kind of like even, even the whole playing field. So, it, 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 and it will mean a lot um, just because of the work our players have been putting in. I have really been trying to assess what we've been doing offensively and defensively. And other than maybe one or two things, that's not the issue right now. The issue is fatigue. You know, you look at the minutes in the last game, uh, four of my starters played 40 plus minutes. They didn't have one kid that played 40 plus minutes. It's not because I don't trust my bench, it's because my bench um, got in foul trouble and Dez was out, who now she's back, you know what I mean? So it's just stuff like that, that just, it's our storm, it's our journey. And that's what I'm trying to explain to our team. Like this is, this is Team 48's journey. You know, I look at the picture in my office, um, four of my starters are no longer here, you know? And Angel and Snuda at one point was coming off the bench. So let's really be honest. Do, did people think we would be 16 and, and whatever we are right now? I, I don't, five and, and whatever we are, two? I, I don't think people would have thought that. And so I'm not trying to have like a um, moral victory. Uh, the, the, the fact is uh, we have five wins and we want to try to build on that. And it, Mississippi State is the next opponent. And, and one of the things that may be great for us is that we'll probably – I won't have to pump them up for it. Good. Just come off that a little bit. Like, uh, with the 10 losses mm -hmm. going into going, living forward, how does that help propel your team living forward, just knowing they can be in that situation? Just yeah, you know, it's a, it was a valuable lesson, I'd like to think. Um, I, th I felt like when we won the five games in a row, and that's why I was so, like, mild-mannered the whole time, is because that's, it's kind of, like, risque, you know? Like, you win five games, and we were hunting down everybody. And uh, I think we forgot that people were trying to come up after us. You know, we were so, like, on cloud ten, like, oh, we're, we're hunting, we're hunting, we're hunting. Okay, who's next? Alabama, we're going to hunt them. But we forgot, like, they too have, they want to hunt us. And so for we kind of lost our way and started becoming the hunted. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and that's something that our team, you know, last year we didn't start 5-0. and So that's something that our team, this is new for us. Whereas, you know, you have um, uh, South Carolina, they're always trying to be hunted. But they know how to say, nah, we're still going to hunt you. Tennessee, we're still going to hunt you. LSU, nah, we know you want to come and get us, and we're going to protect what we have. This is something that our team is having to learn. You know, until they can catch us up, we're on the hunt, you know, and, and, and being hunted. But we still can hunt because we have a number we're trying to reach. And I felt like we kind of lost that especially after they realized they couldn't go 8 no to start it, it it rocked them and i'm i'm almost i'd almost like to think that bama probably beat us twice and i'm not taking anything away from auburn i think they played a phenomenal game and the crowd was electric um but but i just think we never recovered I, i'm watching and studying teams kansas men you know lost to kansas state and and then went and got blown out by TCU and then Baylor like they can't recover, and 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 that's a Hall of Fame coach, <laughs> you know. So we're all trying to figure out how to recover after you get a reality check of a season and how competitive it is, and that's what we're doing as a team. Tired, she all right? Yeah, I mean we're taking it uh, day by day. You know, we're trying to rest her. Ty is tough. Here's what I know, if she can play, she'll play. 
And if she can't, we won't have her. Um, and, and that makes me feel comfortable. Do you want to show a long-term kind of damage or anything? Uh, no, no, no. But but as far as her availability for tomorrow, that's still up, still up in the air. Was there anything that you saw or learned in that first state game that you maybe made as a point of emphasis going into this one? Um, I felt like our first five games, we were just on a mission, you know, and anybody that was in the way, um, we removed them. And and we've had big wins on the road. Um, and so for us, um, it was just a level of confidence. You know, that win really got us going because the environment was so wild, you know, and they jumped on us right away and we kept our composure. Like I just really watched our team grow up. And so if there's anything that we did, I felt like we stayed together for 40 minutes, and that's what we'll have to do again because I'm sure that they'll want to avenge the loss. Any other questions for Coach? Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.